recent report from Goldman Sachs estimates about 300 million jobs could be affected by generative AI, meaning 18 percent of work globally could be automated. Now, the report also predicts two-thirds of jobs in the U.S. and Europe are exposed to some degree of AI automation, and about a quarter of all jobs could be performed by AI entirely. And one industry that's already using a AI that you might not really think about is the world of fashion. And for more on how AI is now being used for fashion forecasting, we're joined by Anna Friedlander, who is the North American Director of Fashion Solution and Strategy at Infor. Thanks so much for joining us. We certainly appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So, you know, we often think about fashion being like what people see, what people like, and, and what's cool or hip or trendy. Yes. But AI is actually being used to forecast the next big fashion trend? Absolutely. You have to think about it as we don't even know that AI has been used in our industry for the last couple of years. That's mm -hmm. one of the things. When you're ordering online, you see mm -hmm. what else can you buy? What else do you want to buy? Mm -hmm. When you go online to something that you've already bought, they already have suggested um, oh. based on your styles, yes. based on your buying patterns. Mm -hmm. And also whoever bought this also wants you to buy that or oh. also bought this, right? Mm -hmm. So all of that is based on data okay. and it's, it's put into an AI tool mm -hmm. and based on the algorithms and models that you want to do, it mm -hmm. spits out trends, it spits out um, um, suggested, uh -huh. suggested trends. And now mm -hmm. for design, one of the things they're doing as well is they're using AI tools now based on the data they're taking based on history, mm -hmm. based on historical sales, based on market trends and even social media allows them to start recommending what designs you should do and basically makes the designers start looking at it in a much faster way uh -huh. and able to comply with the consumer buying trends and even customer segments of where they want to um, focus on. Okay, so in other words, because of this data, they're telling designers, hey, skinny jeans are out, you gotta go to wide leg. Yeah. They're, they're just... Well, it's not even that. It's even what you're searching on. You're, when you start searching on for mm -hmm. summer, mm -hmm. you're looking, let's say, for pastels or sort of short sleeves or mm -hmm. um, certain lengths of skirts. Mm -hmm. Th that alone will say, based on your historical designs and sales, you've never mm -hmm. had short sleeves, you've never had skirts. Now, maybe you should start looking into that mm -hmm. because this customer segment or this customer market is starting to search on it or they're starting to look at it. Um, in the past, you had designers going to Europe, going all over the world mm -hmm. to start shopping fashion. Now they can do that based on analysis, based mm -hmm. on data and based on the market. And you can start, excuse me, start suggesting already mm -hmm. from there what they need to produce. Okay. And it goes a lot further than yes. just design. It goes into your supply chain. It goes, it goes into your demand forecasting as well. I can actually talk about this for hours. Yes. I didn't yes. realize. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's very interesting. And of course, yeah. a lot of this is all based on people buying online. That's correct. You're in the stores. I guess they use the data the from data, right. what is being sold. All right. And well, you thank don't you. think about that, right? Yeah, no, you really don't. Yes. So thank you so much for joining thank us you. and giving us a little glimpse of, of how AI can impact fashion. And for more information about Anna Friedlander and fashion forecasting, just go to our website, kcalnews.com, and click Scene on TV.